Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video of the Autech Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the RTX 2080, made by HP. So uh, what's the first thing you can think of when we talk about OEM video cards? Cheap out PCBs, plastic shrouds, and poor cooling? However, that is not the case with what we're looking at today. So Timmy Joe made a video of buying the cheapest 2080 Ti on eBay. Um, it's an Alienware card and it's a really cheap looking plastic shroud and very poor cooler. And I, I bought it and I already really regret it. <laughs> he ended up replacing the cooler to let it boost to the frequency it's supposed to. The first thing I was thinking of when I got a video card is I may need to replace the cooler on this. However, for the 20 series card, Nvidia introduced a new combined LED and power connector for fans. But they only use that on the reference PCB. And most AIBs actually keep the traditional 4 pin 12 volt connector for the fan and 5 volt connector for the LED. Since I cannot find a PCB picture of the HP 2080, so I decided to take it apart when I get it and see what kind of connectors it has. So here we go. Actually, although it uses the reference PCB, but it has a traditional 4 pin connector. So the few eBay listings I find, it's not gonna work as they use the combined new connector. Um, but how bad could it be? So I decided to run some benchmarks to see if the cooler actually needs to be replaced. However, to my surprise, it's getting an average 2080 score with very normal boost clocks. And if we take a look at the temperature, it's actually almost the same as the reference model. Mm. So that is already a surprise right there. And then I open EVGA X1 precision and the fan is actually only limited to 32% of its total capacity. That makes me wonder, if I ramp up the fan speed, will I be able to overclock while keeping the same cooler? So here's the EVGA precision X1 software. It's pretty much like after burner, but with a few additional features. So um, here you're looking at the uh, core clock offset, memory clock offset, and then we have the power limit. So here we're gonna put the voltage limit and the power limit to the maximum. Don't worry, it's not gonna damage your video card as NVIDIA actually lock the maximum value in BIOS and it's completely safe. And then after that, we'll ramp up the fan speed. And let's start from a very moderate 100 megahertz overclock. Most 2080s should be able to handle it just fine. And since this one has a reference PCB, so um, it's all about a cooler. Let's see how it works. So it is getting a little bit toasty in 3D marks. And I just not hear the fan ramping up. So after checking, I figured that somehow the EVGX1 software cannot control the fan speed. But even with the same fan speed, it still keeps a pretty steady temperature of around 75 degrees. And the average temperature is actually lower than expected. So we're able to get 400 points increase, which is not bad for a very moderate overclock. And if we take a look at the average temperature, it's actually only 65 degrees at stock fan curve. So that's kind of impressive. And then let's try something more extreme. I'm gonna overclock it by 200 megahertz, which is pretty much the limit of the uh, Phonus Edition cards. I've changed the fan speed here with MSI after burner and then let's run 3D marks again. So um, to my surprise, the temperature is pretty low and the fan noise is completely manageable. I mean, it's not whisper quiet, but if you're overclocking, basically you have to choose a balance between performance and the quietness. There's no way to get both at the same time. So the temperature is also around 75 degrees at full load. However, we're able to get another 400 points in increase. And if you look at the average temperature here, 65 degrees, which is very impressive. And honestly, as I said, the fan noise is still manageable at 50% speed. And I can absolutely use it daily with that. After a little more tweaking with the core clock and a memory clock, I was able to get another 200 points out of it, which makes us the 71st place in 3D Mark Time Spy with the same hardware all over the world. So here are some before and after comparison. 
So for 3D Mark Time Spy, we're able to get about 10% increase. And then for the compute performance, we're running Geekbench 5 AI compute test in both OpenCL and CUDA. So it's less of an improvement here. We're looking at about 3% increase in OpenCL and about 5% in CUDA. And next is the GTA 5. To my surprise, there is no increase at all with the overclock. That is probably because GTA 5 is an older game and it's not that graphics intensive. It only runs DirectX 11 and we're only looking at about 2% performance increase. The same situation applies for Hitman 2. We're only getting less than 1% or less than 1 FPS of increase. I mean, honestly, in my opinion, overclocking video cards has been more of a fun. It's not that meaningful in the real world. I mean, if your video card cannot handle a game and only do 10 FPS, even if you overclock the heck out of it and get 12 FPS, it's still not playable. Say if your video card can handle a game at 100 FPS, then I don't think it's going to make a difference if you get it to run at 105 FPS. And lastly, it's our Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, we're only looking at 2 FPS increase. However, if you look at the GPU bound here, before the overclocking, it's actually 25% GPU bound. But after overclocking, it's only 5%. And it's actually our CPU limiting the FPS, not the video card. So this video card has really changed my impression on the OEM video cards. I mean, the card is very well built, has a very nice cooler on it, and actually looks good. That's the reference PCB, which means you have the aftermarket water cooling options. Not to say it actually has a proper backplate. Am I satisfied with the video card? Yes. But will I recommend it? Probably no. I got this brand new in box, but usually you can only buy them pulled from computers. You have no idea what has been done to it, why they're selling it, and there's no warranty if anything happens to your card. So, unless you're getting a really good deal on it, like Timmy Joe did on his 2080 Ti, I will still say, try to stay away from these cards. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. You can also join the discussion by leaving a comment below. Thanks for watching.